So here's an example of one infinite series, just to give you a feel for how this stuff um, works. Just one kind of basic example. So the notation here represents the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, where the terms are given by this formula 1 over 2 to the n. Um, so if I expanded this, at least the first few terms, this would be 1 over 2 to the first plus 1 over 2 to the second okay, plus 1 over 2 to the third, and so on. So this would be 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. Uh, 1 over 2 to the fourth would be 16, and so on from there. Uh, one way to visualize um, the sum of this series is to say, suppose we have a box uh, a unit square. So the length of each side of the square is 1. And so the area of the square would be 1 times 1. So it's one squared unit. Um, as a way of uh, writing the area of this square, suppose we divide it in half. So then the area of this rectangle over here would be 1 half, since it's 1 half of that unit square. Take the remaining uh, rectangle over here, divide that in half, so the area of this square here will be 1 fourth. Take the remaining square here, divide that in half, the area here will be 1 eighth. Take the remaining rectangle here, divide it in half, so the, the, the area here would be 1 16th, because it'll be half of an eighth remaining, so a 16th. And then we could keep doing this forever, so 1 16th, I mean, theoretically. And then so the, the remaining square here is 1 16th in area. So if I divide that in half, this is 1 32nd. OK, and so you could continue like this forever. But so if you take the sum of the area of each piece here, that's, it's the, it is, matches the terms in this uh, infinite sum. So 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 16th plus 1 32nd. Um, so we can see with this representation, that the infinite sum should converge to 1. That's the overall area of the square. Uh, makes sense with the picture, um, but maybe a, a more sound mathematical argument here if I use the definition uh, that I gave you up above. So that is if we base this on the partial sums. Let's look at that sequence of partial sums. So S1 is the sum of just the first term, so 1 half. S2 would be the sum of the first two terms, so 1 half plus 1 fourth. We're going to capture these two terms. Uh, if you get a common denominator there, 1 half plus 1 fourth, this is 2 over 4 plus 1 over 4, so 3 over 4. S3 is the sum of the first three terms. Notice now, though, so if we want the sum of the first three terms, we already know that the sum of the first two terms is 3 fourths. We just found that. So really, you just need to add 1 eighth. Um, the sequence of partial sums really is a, a recursive sequence. You're just taking your previous sum and then adding uh, the following term. So let me write it out this way. So the sum of the first three terms will be 3 fourths from the sum of the first two terms, plus the next term is 1 eighth. So if I got a common denominator there, so times 2 on the top and bottom, this would be 6 over 8 plus 1 over 8, so 7 over 8. I'll just do one more. Sum of the first 4, well, we know that the sum of the first 3 is 7 eighths, no point in adding those 3 up again, plus the next term, 1 16th. So that'll be 14 over 16 plus 1 over 16, so 15 over 16. Okay, now suppose we try to come up with the sum of the fifth term just by identifying a pattern here. So this, the sum of the first five terms. So let's see, we went from 1 half to 3 fourths to 7 eighths to 15 sixteenths. Uh, let's focus on the denominator first here. So it's going 2, 4, 8, 16. Next denominator is probably going to be the next power of 2, 2 to the fifth, which is 32. 
the pattern in the numerator, we'll notice that the numerator is always one less than the denominator. So I'm going to guess that S5 is 31 over 32. Um, if we actually work that out, let's see, so we know that the sum of the first four terms here is 15 over 16. If we add the next term, which is 1 over 32, that's 30 over 32 plus 1 over 32. So we do get that 31 over 32. Um, okay, so it looks like we're ready to write a general formula for the nth partial sum, the sum of the first n terms. Suppose we want the sum of the first 100 terms. Because really, what we want to investigate, if this sum goes on forever, what we would want to look at is, okay, so what's the sum of the first 100 terms? What's the sum of the first 1,000 terms? What's the sum of the first 10,000 terms? Something like that um, would be how we would want to investigate this. So the idea is to write a formula in terms of n for the sum of the first n terms, and then take the limit of that expression as n approaches infinity. And that'll give us this infinite sum, sorry. We got a timer going here. Um, so like I said, denominator, the pattern is, this is two to the first in the denominator, and then two to the second, and then two to the third. So it's showing up, and then two to the fourth. So the denominator, let's see, for S1, it's two to the first. For S2, it's two to the second. For S3, it's two to the third. So the denominator is two to the n and the numerator is always one less. So it's whatever the denominator is, I wrote it as two to the n minus one. Um, maybe a simpler way to write this is if we divide the, or split up the numerator, two to the n over two to the n, I'll write it out, minus one over two to the n. So that's one minus one over two to the n. This is your formula for the nth partial sum. And so now, if you want to find the sum of this infinite series, we take the limit of the partial sums as n approaches infinity. Oops. Of the partial sums. So this is the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n, which is 1 minus, this will be 1 over infinity, as the form 1 over infinity. So this is approaching 0 as n approaches infinity. And so we're approaching one minus zero. And so the sum really is one, which is what I was arguing with my unit square over there. But I just wanted, with the square, I wanted to give you a visual of how is it possible that a sum of positive terms that's going on forever can possibly add up to anything finite. And so when you start to wonder that, when you're working on these problems, think of that unit square. So the, the infinite sums that converge have that sort of behavior where the piece that you're adding is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's one thing that needs to happen in order for these uh, infinite series to converge. That's not enough by itself, but, but all infinite series that converge do exhibit that behavior. So that's something you're looking for.